next thing we have for the day. I believe you have been following keenly and you have been um you are gaining a lot. So pay attention. You have a lot to gain. Um now nah, I want us to discuss something on periodicity of elements. Periodicity of elements. Alright, this is a fantastic topic that both Jan and you know, they ask their question from and um now when you're talking about periodicity of elements, you cannot but you know mention periodic table. And when you are talking about periodic table, you are talking about that chart that contains all of the elements we have. You know, we have more than 100 elements. So when you talk about periodic table, you mean that table that you know you have the elements we have arranged in what in order of their um increasing atomic numbers or of course somebody once said it that i think mendelief that you know you arrange um uh, atoms in, in the order of the increasing molar mass but it was later found out that that was quite wrong all right so now i'm saying that periodic table is just chart of elements you know arranged in you know in the order of the atomic number all right the atomic number there is actually the number of proton that you have in the in the in each particular atom now when we are talking about a periodic table and the elements that are there there are some properties that are peculiar to uh, these atoms there and the periodic table in general and these properties they have a usual trend that they follow they have the usual trend that they follow for instance now melting point is a property boiling point is a property now when we are talking about the boiling point of melting of of of, of, of of materials now or the melting points if it's solid you know there's a trend it follows and if it's a liquid there's a trend that the boiling point also follow this is exactly what we are going to be discussing right now 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 periodicity of elements periodicity of elements now there are some property like i said the other time you have your atomic radius you have your ionic radius you have your electronegativity you have your electro positivity you have your boiling points you have your melting points you have what other thing do we have we have our electron affinity yeah at least whenever you are going to be describing the elements we have in the periodic table these are very much important to be mentioned because they are the properties that almost all of them exhibit all right but in varying degree and varying frequency now <clears throat> in the periodic table the elements are placed in groups and periods now you have your group one here you have your group two here and the likes also you have your halogen you have your noble gas okay now this is exactly what i mean So you have your hydrogen here, you have your helium. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is your group one. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down. Group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, seven, and eight. All right. Now, so these are called alkali metal these are called alkali heads metal and the lights uh, all right so now when we are talking about um atomic radius what exactly is atomic radius now when you get an atom and you measure the distance between the nucleus and the outermost shell you are going to have your atomic radius all right and ionic radius is when you get the same atom but now not the neutral atom but rather the charged atom let us assume you have your sodium atom in the first case now this is your neutral atom so when you measure the distance between the nucleus of this atom 
and the outermost shell there, the way you have the outermost electron, you are going to have those atomic figures. But when it forms its ion, when it forms its ion, it is going to be what? What you are going to have is um you are going to have ionic radius instead of atomic radius. Now we have electronegativity. What exactly do you mean by electronegativity? All right. Um, <clears throat> and we have electropositivity. All right. We have boiling points. We have melting points, and we have electron affinity. All right. Electron affinity is the tendency of an atom to draw electron towards itself. Why electronegativity is that? You no, know, the frequency of the power which it has to attract electron. All right. So that's. We have electropositivity as well. That is talking about the tendency of an atom to lose an electron and become a positively charged ion. And we have your burning point and we have your melting point. Now, when we are talking about the trend of each of these property on the periodic table, what exactly do we mean? Follow me, Kindy, please. I believe you have jotted this down. Now, when you are talking about atomic radius, now, atomic radius across the period, atomic radius decreases across the period. Atomic radius decreases across the period. Why is it that atomic radius decreases across the period? Now, let's take this for instance. All right. Don't forget that you can say this is period one. This is period one, and this is period two, right? Now, across this period one, what happened is that atomic radius decreased. Now, what is exactly is responsible for increase in atomic, de uh, decrease in atomic radius? Let us take uh, hydrogen in lithium, for instance. Now, when we look at lithium, lithium is having theory to be its atomic number, right? Now, it means you have if you want to write the electronic configuration, you are going to have two one. What it means is that you have three proton and you have three electron. In other words, you have your um three electron here. And what is going to happen is if you are going to draw the shell, you are going to draw this shell, you are going to have your two electron here, and you're going to have your what? Your one electron here. All right. So that is lithium for you. Now, when you now come to this lithium beryllium, now beryllium is what? Beryllium is simply four. Now, it means when you want to write the electronic configuration, you're going to have it to be two comma two. All right. Now, when you do that, once you draw it on a shell, you're going to have your two year, you're going to have your two year, and you have your two year. Now, what happened is that you can realize that how many shell do you have here? You have two shell here. How many shell do you have here? As well? You have just two shell as well. The number of shell does not increase. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. The number of shell does not increase. But to realize that the number of proton you have here is just what? Three. Why the number of proton you have here is what? Four. And when you're talking about proton, you're talking about the positive charge in what? In the, you know, you're talking about proton. Proton is positively charged. So it means the nuclear charge you have in this as increase now formally for lithium it was three but for beryllium now it is now four now when the nuclear charge increase you realize that the uh number of share does not increase and because of that increase in the nuclear charge is going to really give power to the nucleus to draw this shell closer to itself because the number of nuclear charge has increased but in this case, the number of nuclear charge is what? It's just two. So, of course, the nucleus is going to draw the, or it's three rather. Of course, the nucleus is going to draw the electron towards itself, but not as much as this will, because here yeah, we have four protons. That is, you can say four nuclear charge there. So, because of that, the outer shell, that is, the phalanx shell, is going to be pulled closer to the nucleus than the weight is going to be pulled here. And when you pull it closer to yourself, it means you are decreasing the distance that is in between you. And because of that, the atomic radius, which is the distance, or so to say, from the nucleus to the atomic shell, is going to decrease. So that is the idea behind atomic radius decreasing across the period so the same rationale relies is what we follow when we are talking about ionic radius as well so atomic radius decreases across the period simple as that that one is ironed out already 
atomic radius okay i'm looking for a better place to put it all right atomic radius atomic radius and ionic radius both of them decrease across the period They increase, they decrease across the period and they increase down the group. Now, why would they increase down the group is that now when you're talking about group one, you know that in group one you have one electron in the what in the outer motion. And if it is period two now, if it is going to be period two, what you are having is simply your what? You are going to have your um um for instance, when you talk about hydrogen helium lithium, lithium is having two one. And it means we have two share there. Now, when you keep coming down the group like this, you realize that the share keeps increasing. Now, because the share keeps increasing, the shell is going to shoot the nucleus from pulling the electrons in the outermost shell toward itself. And because of that, the pulling is really going to be negligible. And because of that, the atomic radius will keep increasing and not decreasing. So just understand it from there. All right. For instance, we have just two shell here. When you come to this place, you have you have your three shell. Now, if this is going to be pulling electron, you have here. You know that it's going to be need greater energy to pull the electrons towards itself than this is going to be leading. And of course, the effect is going to be minimal. And because of that, the atomic radius and ionic radius they increase than the group. So that's all about that. Now let's talk about electropositivity now electropositivity is also called metallicity now and it is the tendency of an atom to lose an electron now when you're talking about electropositivity it is peculiar to metal mostly now metal they are what you have your lithium you have your beryllium you have your sodium you have your um magnesium you have your potassium you have your aluminum and the likes so now as you move across the period that is across this period as you move the Metallicity or electropositivity also decreases across the period. All right. <clears throat> now, let's talk about the other properties. Now, the other properties are the electron affinity, the electronegativity, um, ionization energy and the lights. Now, when you look at electron affinity, electron affinity is the tendency of the atom to attract electron toward itself. And when you look at it, you know, metals are not electron. They don't have electron affinity. They rather love to give out the electron that they have. So, and as you increase, as you keep in, uh, as you keep moving across the period, you realize that electron affinity increases. At uh, the same way, electronegativity also increases across the period and uh, ionization energy also increase across the period. All right, what is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the energy you need to knock off an electron from an atom in its neutral state. And most of the time, we also relate it to gaseous species. So, for instance, let us assume you have your um, oxygen gas now. The amount of energy you need to knock off the very electron from this is what you call ionization energy. And what you have after that is you may have your something of this nature and you have your two EA. So, and that's all about that. So, that is your ionization energy here is the amount of energy that is needed to knock off an electron from an element in its neutral state to give an ion. So, when you knock off an electron, that amount of energy that you need to knock off the um, the electron is what you call ionization energy because in that process you are forming an ion so that's that's all about that so i'm saying that ionization energy electron affinity and electronegativity they all increase across the period now from this let's solve the questions we have all of the following decrease than a group except dash all of the following decrease than a group except dash don't forget when you increase across the period you decrease down the group when you increase across period you decrease down the group
So now it means all of this increase across the period and they decrease down the group. So all of the following decreases down the group except electron affinity, of course, it is part of it. Atomic radius, energy, energy, and electronegativity, of course, you know the atomic radius is the whole one day. It is not part of um part of those properties that decrease down the group. Now the second question is in the periodic table, what is the trend of electropositivity of an atom? All right, electropositivity of an atom in the periodic table is that, don't forget, I said it's what? It decreases across the period and increase down the group. All right, so what you happen is that option A is constant down the group, no. Option B is constant across the period, no. Option C is decreases down the period, no. Option D is decreases down the group. Option C is decreases across the period. Yes, that's the option, yes. Don't forget I said that it decreases across the period. Why it increases down the group. That is um, electropositivity or metallicity for you. All right. The, very, the next question is, which of the following arrangements is in the order of decreasing electropositivity? All right. Now, there's a practical example to decreasing across the period and increasing across the period that I've been mentioning that I have been shouting. Now, let's look at this particular um, example. Now, option A is we have your fluorine, you have your boron, you have your beryllium, you have your nitrogen, and you have your lithium. And option B is you have your lithium, you have your beryllium, you have your boron, you have your nitrogen, and you have your fluorine. Option C, you have your fluorine, you have your nitrogen, you have your boron, you have your beryllium, and you have your lithium. And the last option is what you have is you have your lithium, you have your nitrogen, you have your boron, you have your fluorine, and you have your beryllium. Now, when you look at this option, the question is, the um which of the following arrangement is in order of decreasing electropositivity they want whether they want to test your knowledge of you know, the trend of electropositivity in the um periodic table now i have said that electropositivity decreases across the period it means elements in group 7 is going to have lesser electropositivity than the one in group 6 than the one in group 7 so that the one in group 5 than the one in group 4 in that order so now the question is which of the following arrangement is in the order of decreasing electropositivity? Electropositivity. That is starting from the atom having the highest electropositivity to the one having the least electropositivity. Now, which one is going to have the highest electropositivity? Let's look at it. This one is in group seven. That's fluorine. This is boron. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. Okay, let's try the group. All right, they are all in period. Okay, let's let's just draw it so that you will all understand what I am. Trying to pass across hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Fluorine. Yeah. All right. This one is having the highest electropositivity. So we are going to look at the decreasing trend now. So it means the option that has lithium first, followed by beryllium, followed by boron, followed by nitrogen and fluorine is our answer. So because that is the decreasing order, and automatically that makes our option B the the correct answer. So that's that we we have been able to provide justice to that. The next question is the lower the electronegativity difference between two elements. The dash. No, there is something that there's a knowledge. That's what the knowledge of electronegativity difference can afford us, and that is to tell us whether the bond in between our compounds is a very polar bond or it is no polar bond. All right. So now the lower the electronegativity difference between two elements, the dash. Now I want you to understand that the higher the electronegativity difference the higher the polarity in the interatomic bond. Now, when we're talking about interatomic bond, we are talking about whether ionic bond or we are talking about covalent bond. All right. So, anytime the electronegativity difference between the two atoms coming together to form the bond is very great or is very wide, say above 0 0.5, no, and 0 0.5 and above, the kind of bond there is going to be very polar. 
So now the lesser the number of or the lesser the amount of electronegativity difference now is going to be in that the weaker the polarity. Do you understand? That is, as the electronegativity difference keeps increasing, the polarity between the words, the atoms that come together to form this bond or the polarity of the bond itself will be increasing. That is because the what the electronegativity difference is higher. But anytime the electronegativity difference is low, the polarity of the bond will decrease. So let's look at the option straight there. The lower the electronegativity difference between two elements, hey, the higher the polarity of the interatomic bond, no. The weaker the polarity of the of the interatomic bond, yes. See higher possibility of forming a molecule, no. The weaker the interatomic bond, no. That is not even the we are not see it's weaker the polarity now. The pol we are talking about polarity. Electronegativity different talk about polarity. Please understand that. So that is all uh that's all about that. Now the next question, the second to the last question for the day is which group of the periodic table does an element having the highest electronegativity belongs to? You don't have to trouble yourself. I said electronegativity increases across the period and decreases across the group uh, down the group rather so it means group one has a le uh, group one elements have a lesser electronegativity than group two in that order so now we have our group 7a group 3a group 1a and group 2a automatically group 7a is having the highest electronegativity you know noble gas were not mentioned there because we don't even talk about their electronegativity or because they are inert, they are unreactive. And the reason is because they have eight electrons in their atomic shell. All right, the last question for the day. An element is said to be electronegative if they want to test your knowledge of electronegativity. An element is said to be electronegative if A, it readily attracts phalanx electron in a chemical bond, B, it has the tendency to lose electron, wrong, C, it has the tendency to repel phalanx electron in a chemical bond. Wrong. D. It has the ability to exist as a gas in a gaseous form. Wrong. So the correct option is option A. So whenever an atom has a tendency or it readily attracts phalanx electron into itself in a covalent bond, that element or atom is said to be electronegative. All right. Lots and lots of questions like this. Why can jam be set for you under this? So you really help yourself by laying your hand on more examples that come your way. Thank you very much for the rapt attention you have you know, paid to me. I really love you all. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe to Science Ignite Arica. And like I will always say, don't despise knowledge. Knowledge is very key in your process of becoming great in life. Thank you.